in a movie, writing a story. I suppose it's more of a a real career choice now than being like pie in the sky, going to be in a band or something. There's all the kind of different sides like engineering and it's like college courses, music now. for TV or film and all that yeah. stuff. So. Uh -huh. But that's the great thing about being at your age at the moment that you're finding out who you are and who you think you can be. If there's a wee sneaking passion in there, that's the thing you have to follow. And if it be it music, then grasp it by the throat and give it a good shake because it's a wonderfully rewarding experience when it, when it connects. There is a sort of confidence now uh, within Scotland, I think, and it's, uh, you can see it when, when people start singing in their own accents, you know, the vernacular, you know, the, the, that's a lot more apparent. Now. This is how I sing, so I'm not trying to sing Scottish. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm probably trying to go the other way, mm -hmm. but you can't help it. That's yeah. just, you know, and it, again, it's back to this acceptance thing. It's almost like regional accents, you're allowed to have them in the noughties, and it's just another extension of folk are just a little bit... A bit more open to it. Yeah, yeah. open-minded. What other bands influenced you when you were at right Um, There was a really wide mix of bands. Certainly the Sex Pistols and The Clash originally, the Buzzcocks were all big influences on us at the very beginning. We had Stuart Adamson, the guitar player in the Skids. He was influenced by a whole array of different people, but melodic guitar playing. So, And he was also really hugely influenced by Scottish traditional music. So he incorporated that into the kind of way he played guitar. So he very cleverly detuned our guitars by a semitone. So when we played the key, we played a lot of stuff in was in D. So when you play a D with the open G string, it sounded like bagpipes. And the, and the way he played a lot of the rhythms, like Into the Valley and Masquerade, well, they have a kind of traditional jig-like feel about them. And uh, I think, I mean, a lot of young Scots subconsciously really responded to that and loved the, you know, would never say they like folk music, but but actually the kind of gung-ho element of it, you know, the kind of thing that makes your shoulders pull back and your hair stand up. I think he, he actually really kind of managed to capture that in some way. Who's the, who's the piper? We've had a, we put a piper, we've had a piper on one of our records before, but we found it quite because you're going to play in certain keys, can't you? Yeah. And it's quite restricting, so you could only play a certain amount of notes. Basically what we've done is we've took the song and just added wee bits to it. We've added like um, some cymbals, some like a sort of spooky effect at the start and repeating that at the end. And we've written a bass line for the piece and we've added in a drum beat and possibly the an electric guitar put in towards the end. It's, it's a good opportunity. It's definitely a good opportunity and all this equipment is, you know, brilliant. Something we don't normally get a chance to use. Yeah. I've got two rows, I've got two rows for it. But I could just do the same thing. I could do, 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 or something like that. Okay. I'd say, oh, it's on there, you know, I'd like that. Can I just do it a wee bit and then uh, record a wee bit of, like, um, yeah, yeah. Because I'd be able to yeah, do that, but... That part, but I just don't know what... We've added a bagpipe track to it. Maybe do that with the introduction, but I uh, don't know if it's going to work or fit in, but we'll see. Just plant this at the start of whatever arrangement we get, whatever everybody's done. Just plant this at the start of it as an idea. So it's just wah, da, 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 like a few bars of it. It doesn't make much difference, but you know. Either gaff of them around your head, right? Or. <laughs> they'll be, they'll be all, honestly, they'll be fine. They'll be good. I'm not going to put on a four set of headphones. Oh, like, oh look, God. Look, 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 Jimmy, put a for a second. No, I'm not going to three on. The Stuart guy better appreciate this. Who is the Stuart guy? Wait, who's that? Would you go off calling him some Stuart guy? Eh? Try stuff a bit more, a bit more moving. Play a jig. Play a jig. Bell Sebastian jig. Do you know what you see? I was just waiting for a boof. Yeah, emotional, isn't it? Well, I'm, Aye, I'm very emotional. Bit, I'm quite emotional. No, it is though, you know, because I know you're, cause you're out of breath perhaps, but <laughs> it's really natural. It's just, it's nice. It's, 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 it's emotive. You've earned a little bit of water. You've earned a little bit of water. You've earned a little bit of water. Save that space in case there's an unfortunate incident. You want to eat it again? Yeah.
I've not heard the remix yet, but the original track's quite good, and I'm actually a wee bit of a fan of Bill Sebastian. Track is quite interesting. It's got like a bit of story to it, so you can do a lot of different things for making a video for it. With their character, try to find things that will help him on his journey, because he uh, wants to make his own country to live in, because he doesn't have anywhere to live, because he get kicked out. It was good meeting, because we got to ask him questions about the track, and got to know a little bit about the track more, and you don't usually get to do that, which is so it's quite a good experience. It's pretty cool meeting him. The song was good, I'll enjoy the song. Very interesting, different from the original track. He's reached two signs and they say don't know and lost. So he's basically trying to work out where he is. Right now I'm just drawing his face reactions. Oh, if only I let you Le pas de De la bourgeoisie Amazing. <laughs> Bro, it's quite a... It's quite a lot to take in, actually. I mean, I have to ask, how much... How much was the, the boys and girls' involvement in the... in the music and the video side? How much? Obviously, what you can hear there is bagpipes, and this this happened the last day. Are, are they real pipes? Real pipes. Oh, because oh, right. imagine someone in the room. Yeah, it's like, it's so uh -huh. clash, and he's blaring. Everybody's like yeah, that. Yeah. You know, trying to get a trying to get a level. A level. You know, with a, a fifty-eight going into a laptop. <laughs> trying to get a level for the P department. Uh -huh. And he was struggling to actually hear the track, and says, "I was kind of out of tune." Says, "Can you just get a bit of it's the melody?" You really, know? I know for a fact it was really, really difficult to get uh -huh. pipes working with. Any uh -huh. pop track uh -huh. because right. of the, the, key, the, the, key. the, the, the tuning. So yeah. that is amazing, yeah. actually. Yeah. The, the nice thing is you've played the pipes and then lined up some of the track and have made it quite independent. That introduction, yeah. which is quite off the wall, yeah. but in a good way. Uh -huh. So you've almost made something brand new, yeah. which uh -huh. is great. The synthesizers on the last chorus yeah. are really inventive yeah. and nice, nice parts. There's got quite a lot of. Um, funny counterpoint going on but it all works. The good thing as well is that the video feels like a the feels like a component part of the of the song because there's quite a lot of space in the song and there's quite a lot of space in the video. Mm -hmm. So nothing's getting crowded out. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it adds to the I think it adds to the, the song. It doesn't it doesn't clash. I, I thought some of it was brilliant. I, I, that's the first time I've seen that, that right. video. I could I thought it was quite dark as well, you know? Oh, it's quite melancholy. Yeah, uh, it actually yeah. it quite reminds me of my walk to Canvas Line the other day, <laughs> <laughs> along the along the Clyde Walkway where it's completely desolate. My favourite part of the video actually is um, the the two people meet each other and the the heart turns into the, the baby and then it turns into a snake and then a, a crown and that kind of inventive momentum is always really really good for animation. I really like that and it, it, the rhythm of that you know it helps with the song. So, but I don't, I, I don't have a clue how people would go about starting to make something like that. Wouldn't you like to get away? It's definitely came back round again, that kind of DIY ethic. Yeah. The bands like King Creaso and Bell and Sebastian, but even in terms of the artwork and sort of doing your own sleeves and, and how you present yourself, and I think that it's a good I mean, point. It's great. So much to me because in, when we were going in the 80s, record company had lost their power, the same as nowadays. Right back then, there was kind of like a, an economic reason for it. Whereas today, record companies haven't got the power anymore because you can you can bypass that whole uh, uh, scene in one go, and, and pe most people are choosing to do it that way. You know. What do you mean you're doing little gigs in your own town? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm going to travel five miles and play to nobody. You know, that's better than travelling 500 miles and playing to nobody. Yeah. It wasn't really like, well, I'll show the world or anything. No, I, I, I just, understand. I'm just like, you know what, I want to do this on my own terms yeah. and just enjoy it. You had to, you had to get a deal. It was, it was all kind of like um, cartel, you know, where you, where you, you have, oh, they own everything. They own, sure. Yeah, yeah. Whereas nowadays you can, you can record it in your house and sound just as good, you know. And it's weird that, like, after three or four years, suddenly the industry was kind of coming 
to see us because we were doing yeah. something that was exciting and yeah. uh -huh. but all the time I was thinking well wow what, what are you lot doing here you used to be signed to a major record label and then it was like winning the X Factor you have no control whatsoever they pick the producers or whatever whereas now bands I think uh, I've got I've got more you know especially the in independent and don't forget so. Ken those days too you had, to, you had to buy equipment you had to buy like eight thousand pounds to buy even a back line just for yourself whereas today you've got things like guys band and laptops so eBay, you can buy, you can you can equip yourself, train yourself very quickly. For instance, even come to a studio like this, right, in those days would have been, would have cost a fortune, yeah. I, mean, I really, I, I kind of wish I had it when, when I was, I was your age, because literally you can just imagine the sound and you can probably find a way of making it, which we could never do. We were just stuck with certain things, certain instruments and a couple of synthesizers and a multi-track tape machine that didn't do much other than maybe go backwards. And that was about the most you could do. With, with things, but you can distort things, you can retune them, you can, you know, you can, as Brian's saying, you, you, you can hit a, um, you know, a coffee cup or a toilet bowl and you could tune it into the right, you know, into the right melody that, that, that you wanted it to, uh, to be in. It's good that, I mean, anyone can do it now, but it's going back to what you said again about the punk thing. Punk was great because it opened up music to a lot of people that weren't going to be musical in the first place. Mm -hmm. And the good side of that is that you got some amazing original types of new music and song, but the bad side of that was that you got so much rubbish that went, went with it because everyone else came along thinking they can do it and, and they just didn't have any talent. Mm. That's the thing with um, modern recording. It's like, it's opened up for everyone, which is going to be good because you get some people who wouldn't have been doing it in the first place. There's definitely a thread going through the whole thing, tied up because, you know, the whole punk thing, the, the skids were a fantastic group and there wasn't any punk groups in Scotland, there really yeah, wasn't, point, there wasn't any, you know, so kind of we looked up to them. Was a cause see before that era, wasn't a band, see like you write about Bill and Sebastian because we, they know us, we know them, it goes all the way back to Postcard, right, but before that there's no one who knows who was there, what band was going before, we don't know. Yeah. Your, your generation really, I think, respond to that period in some way because the two things that I think may, may, might appeal to you, one is, it's got an energy and it's certainly a bunch of nobodies from nowhere who have suddenly just said, listen, you will listen to us no matter what. We're going to make you listen to us. And secondly, it's got a kind of sense of its own purpose. We called it the DIY ethic in our day. You know, like, nobody's going to give you the break, but we'll make the break ourselves. You know, we'll go out and forge our own identity and, and, and learn how to make a record and learn how to run our own little record label. What if I don't become famous posthumously? Maybe my story's no good. If I can take one possession, it'll have to be my duty. When oblivion comes calling, it'll be so cold. You're gonna die, you're gonna die, you're gonna die alone. You're gonna die, you're gonna die, you're gonna die alone. Oh, all alone. song um, we're all going to die. We've got one trombone track, we're going to do an octave higher notes kind of version on the, on the trombone. Do that it's like, they call it chip tunes. I love chip What's tunes. Chip, tune? chip tunes like Nintendo 4 music. You listen to that? Sometimes. <laughs> Note change in the and then we'll, What the guys have decided is we each the, these instruments are playing the same notes on their own individual instruments and we want to pull them together in the arrangement. You do that. Uh -huh. and recording. It's quite difficult at first but uh, I got a lot of help from Brian and uh, got used to it and learning quite a lot from it. These guys will be coming in a bit earlier and we'll be staying, we'll be adding an extra hour onto the day kind of thing just so we can, because you know, they've, they've had the time and the crew's been quite relaxed and, and they've been enjoying it. I think that the tune itself is actually, I really like it with the guitars in it, but yeah. I didn't like it so much as the acoustic alone. We but made it better. Yeah, I'll, I'll work it better. Yeah, it's more, <laughs> we've totally changed it. You can't like, really see it similar. It <laughs> yeah, it's more kind of dancey, sort of Ibiza. We're all gonna die. What if there's nothing? We'll all have to face this alone. And this is about the Mexican Day of the Dead. And, I mean, it's a good theme because it's more upbeat than the song is, which is kind of depressing. 
we've got a lot more equipment to work with. I mean, we don't have, well, we've got Photoshop, but we've not got the cameras or the animation to do. So it's great. Cool. Next stop. <laughs> Well, we're just giving it some more colour because in the actual mask from the Mexican Day of the Dead, they're really garish colours. In my future, I'm going to try and be a computer games designer, so this would help for me all the technology using different ways of animating and stuff. You've got certain layers, right? And they work like that, and stuff like that. So, on the top layer here, I've got the line of black and white line that is the skull. Quickly change colours just by and then, you know, you could have all different bits, sort of flashing different colours as you go. Um, well, underneath it's going to be quite dark, but over I'm going to do some really, really bright, garish colours, like the wee skull masks wear. Cool, good. <laughs> First of all, we were normal. We were normal. Yeah, but then we got our face painted. Then we got our face painted. And they were monsters. And they were monsters. <laughs> You've got to laugh into the dark We're all one in a million We're alive, we existed, we took part You're queuing up your thing here So if you click on that clip It'll load in there and if you hit space bar it'll play it Okay We're working as a team He's taking clips from this side he, She's taking clips from that side And I'm editing the thing and we're going to make a well production Malcolm's track gave us a real opportunity to explore left field and dance music from the ideas that the kids had combined with the acoustic instruments that they brought to it and that was really exciting to merge those two and my, that was my job to kind of take these ideas and get one definitive version of, 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 his, of We're All Gonna Die. Kids song, for example, Into the Valley, that was the kind of song that kind of sparked the idea to say, look, this is how we can change this. But then can you not just go... Oh, yeah, but what change the key? No, 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 no. Key change. We've got them facing each other, so it's going to be a single. Key change. Key change. Okay. Okay. Just whenever you guys are ready. I played Daniela and Paul a version of this, of Into the Valley, and it was a kind of almost dubby, techno kind of... Just, I just had the riff of Into the Valley going round and round over a big fat beat. And I was saying, but that's how we can change this song so dramatically. This disease is catching from victory to storm. Ahoy, ahoy, land, sea, and sky. Where that song ended up was being stripped down to the barest, barest essentials of the song, which is the melody and the acoustic guitar. And the journey that made with, with the girls doing that vocal on it was just incredible. And a, a really nice feeling for me to kind of start off with that idea and that of this kid's song and then how it ended up was just it's something that you would never have thought was particularly achievable. And the red guys restaurant. Uh, yeah, that's what I was saying. Did you join your team? <laughs> What's the fish like? <laughs> Yeah, it's been really enjoyable just being in the studio and getting to sing in this environment. It's like, oh, it'd be good to work in a studio like this because it seems all the way to back. I think for me the whole thing has been a huge learning process and being involved, working with 15, 16 year olds, giving them a chance to see and hear at close quarters actual living songwriters, musicians, guys who do it for a living. Um, and just to, to, to be involved in that was, was, was a really rich experience. I know for a fact that artists involved haven't been anywhere near a project like this, and they got a lot out of it too. The reactions from, from them have just been overwhelmingly positive. And you can see from the expressions and, and the, 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 the way these kids have been going about these workshops, and they've really enjoyed it. They've had a fantastic time, and they would have never had an opportunity to do that before either, so I think everyone everyone who took part has, has been... I think I've always got a wee glow from, from this project. You will find a great weight lifting 
in your mind A great weight left down Just leave it behind A great weight left down And you will find A great weight What do you feel about this, this, this what, you, what you've done, you made this contribution to this project, which is a song which will in turn be taken by a bunch of kids and they'll just do whatever they want to. Yeah. How do you feel, do you feel about that process? Pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, a whole new slant on something. I mean, I can't quite picture what, how people could radically change that, but that's the thing I'm quite looking forward to, somebody actually radically changing it. I don't know what they would do. Whatever they like, it's going to be fantastic to just like hear what they come up with, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. It's like a little Christmas present and you don't know what it is and then you'll open it and also, wow, they put that on it and they, yeah. did this and they took that from there and shoved it somewhere else. I like that, that idea. And also the thought of you know, kids that age actually just hearing one of our songs, it's quite an interesting thing because we're not flying at the radio, you know. I was curious to see what people would, like, kids would do the song as well. Sometimes being a musician and stuff can be quite a egocentric, selfish job, so it's about being too cheesy, it's as good to kind of do something that you feel like people might be able to get something positive from, yeah. as well, rather than just writing morning songs all the time. Music is just something that we all do. Now we're all like early 40s and late 30s, and it's something that we do for a living at least, and uh, we enjoy it and we work at it, and it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's important to know that that's a choice in life. It's available. I'm, I'm 50 and I've never next year and I've never had a I'm 50 next year then and I never <laughs> had a, I never had a job other than singing songs because I mean, you'll get like a policeman or a fireman coming around to your school doing a talk and they're taken seriously maybe if a kid who is interested in music they won't have the chance to see that this can be a, a choice and that if I suppose if getting involved in a personal level like the, the bands that are coming in it's like they're getting something solid, saying this is an option, it's not just like a faraway dream or something. Have you been talking to your friends, you talking to your friends out with you about this? Have you been talking to your mum and dad about it? Or? Mm -hmm. My dad always asks me about it, but then when I try to tell him what it is, he's like, what? <laughs> it's a lot different from working in school because we get to, we get more, we're more freelance and we get to do more of our ideas and we don't have to look through and follow and set instructions or do exactly what the teacher says or do exactly how the teacher does it. And, David and Stacey let us have more like control over what we do. A lot different compared to schools and stuff. I know, when we normally record it's just like... One take. One take and if you don't get it, and, and if you muck up a wee tiny wee bit you have to start all over again. And you can just cut it out and play that wee bit again. It's like cheating slightly, but not really. As a teacher you're always looking for to, ways to measure things. You're always looking to, to measure progress of a pupil and one of those ways is through an end product and obviously a project yeah. like this you're looking at how successful it's been by what's produced at the end of it mm. but what i've gathered is that the process has been a whole lot more beneficial than whatever we end up with as an end product just our people's getting the use of this technology and to be working with yourself and you know the opportunity to go into the recording studio is something that i can't offer the pupils at the moment but it's something that through this project that we've been able to do, which is absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's always fun, you know, when you've got, like, kind of chaos happening in the studio. It's, it kind of happens in a more sedate way with bands, but, you know, when you've got, like, a bunch of kids in, they're just running about. It's good to have a day when there's just a lot of, a lot of life in the studio. I think the great thing about what you're doing is the fact that it's it's a concept that they can grasp. You know, they listen to records. Most of them, I mean, at least all the kids that we spoke to today seem to listen to music. And I think if you can set it in that context of, of making contemporary music, then I think, yeah, I think they'll get a lot out of it. And it's actually a really valid exercise in songwriting, this type of thing. Because if you take Paul and I hearing that song done like that, it just makes you think, wow, you should never really make assumptions about music. Just because you maybe create something in a certain context, it can always be something else. I like the fact that the, the, the artists aren't involved in it. It's like there's no respect shown to, to what the original song is or was. Or, and I think that that's the only way it's going to work. And that's, that, that it has, because it's came up with something 
it's completely different from the original. And do, do you feel that during the whole process that the participants could get a feel for how their original ideas became this? Or did at any point you think it got lost on them? Do you, do you really think they had a feel of making something? I think some of them grasped what it was what was going on. I think yeah. the rest genuinely needed to be shown, right, mm -hmm. this is how it ended up, mm -hmm. you know. And we, because because the time span of it all, sure. we've been un, unable to kind of, right, get those kids back in a room. Because we do, what they will see is at the end of it is this DVD uh -huh. of mm -hmm. the lot, and they'll see their work, they'll see everybody else's work. Yeah. And then, the, the, I'm quite sure then, they'll, they'll grasp, you know, the, the context of oh, the whole yeah. thing. That song could end up in a completely different way. Yeah. And I'm quite sure Greg could tell you the, the video could have been something else as well because there was no direction, you know, there's just, just assistance and like, okay, you know, and someone maybe come up with an idea sure. and it, it go, right, okay, well, first of all, you can do anything you want, you know, so yeah. you don't feel restrained or constrained by any, any, you know, any means, you know, yeah. just, just kind of go for it. I think a lot of, like, teenagers nowadays would, like, the tempo yeah. we've done, because, like, it was, like, kind of bland. It was, like, plain at the start to begin with, and then, like, we added our own stuff that would make it, like, suitable for us to listen to. A completely different way of working uh, than in school. This is probably the first time I've really used any kind of software like this and had the opportunity and the freedom to kind of do things my way. We can't wait till the, the final piece yeah. of music. Nice We're really to looking hear the forward to it. After to it. Yeah, it is. It's great. It's great to hear the original <coughs> soundtrack and being able to hear what you have done. And it's like a complete difference from the original one, and it's oh, really it's good. Basically yeah. Mm -hmm. it's it's really really changed all. Well, not really, but it's <coughs> gave it a different <coughs> edge. <laughs> Uh -huh. so I'm actually like quite upset it's ended. I want to do it again. Yeah. Can we not have another week? <laughs> Please. Please. <laughs> In trouble.